All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, everybody that's on the call right now, glad to have you here. And everybody who's uh, maybe watching the recording later, also glad to have you with us. My name is Corey Jones. I'm with Compassion Works for All here in Little Rock. And uh, we're an organization that provides mindfulness meditation programs for people living in jails and prisons. We've been doing that since about 2005. And <clears throat> today, though, it, it's a, a pretty heavy week because of all that's been going on. Um, if you're watching the recording, and, and I don't know when you're watching it, but right now, we are still processing through the events at the Capitol last week when uh, Congress was in session and rioters stormed in. And, uh, and, and while that might not have direct impact on our day-to-day -day lives, especially as far away as Arkansas, it certainly has created some collective trauma for us. Um, I've had a handful of Zoom meetings and Zoom calls since that happened, and I've, I've always tried to check in with people and just ask how they're dealing with things. And uh, across the board, it, it's impacted people in some way. And even if it's not directly, it's still it's still there, it's still lingering. And so I wanted to just at least address it today, not dwell on that specifically, but at least acknowledge that there's sort of a collective cultural trauma that we're experiencing. And we need some good, healthy, mindful ways to process through it. And not just for this moment, but for any that may come down the road, for any that we might have experienced in the past. And, and there are just helpful and healthy ways to process those things, and then obviously unhelpful and unhealthy ways. And unfortunately, the unhelpful and unhealthy ways tend to be easier to do than the helpful and healthy ways. And those tend to be things like obsessing, where we plant ourselves in front of the television or in front of a, a website for hours on end and, and sort of lose track of what's happening in, in reality around us. It can be finger pointing and blaming and saying that this is all because of that person or because of that group. And we become very obsessive about um, assigning blame to people as though that will solve or resolve anything. Um, and we can also turn to our own levels of, of violence, both uh, relational violence, emotional violence, and even physical violence. Um, we can resort to all kinds of things that are unhealthy and unproductive. But healthy and productive ways, in my opinion, start with looking at ourselves, And not just asking ourselves, uh, asking ourselves, am I culpable in this somehow, or am I to blame, but, but starting with, okay, what is this doing to me? Um, as Westerners, we're typically fairly reluctant to, to be self-reflective, um, but we are very quick to be able to point out your flaws. <laughs> you know, uh, I might not spend much time asking, how is this affecting me? But I sure can tell you all the ways it's affecting you. Um, or I can tell you all the ways that this is manifesting in your life or all the ways that this is producing trauma or producing stress or producing anger in your life without really turning the lens back on ourselves and saying, yeah, but what is this doing to me? And so for me, it always begins there. Uh, not only what is this uh, or, or what is my role in this, but also what is this doing to me? Um, there's a guy here in Little Rock named Dr. Dent Gitchell, and he's a fantastic guy. He's a, a mindfulness and meditation teacher. He's been practicing it for a few decades now, and he's written a book called Pursuing Purpose, and it's really good, and I commend it to you. It's uh, available at Wordsworth Books over in the Heights, and you can also find it online. I believe it's on Amazon Kindle, um, but it's called Pursuing Purpose, and he talks a lot about the, the work of compassion and growing compassion in ourselves, and I had a conversation with him last week about it um, over Zoom, and we talked at, at great length about what it means to cultivate compassion within ourselves. And he spoke about this, about how it begins with us. It begins internally. Um, a very simple and helpful question that I've found is um, just to simply ask myself, what am I feeling and thinking right now? Just to pause, to, to let everything fall away, and to tether myself into the present moment and ask, what am I feeling and thinking right now? So what thoughts are in my mind, and then what emotions do those thoughts evoke? And by doing that, I'm, I'm forced to ask myself, is my mind tethered to the present time and place, or is it untethered? Is my mind somewhere else? My physical body might be here in this room, but my mind might be elsewhere. And then when we take stock of what it is that we're thinking and feeling right now in this moment, we can then ask ourselves, how is this causing me to behave in the present moment? 
because an untethered mind creates dissatisfaction and distraction. Whenever our mind is elsewhere, besides on, on what's right in front of us in the same time and in the same space, it creates a great deal of stress, a great deal of anxiety. And so whenever I'm consumed with the news and, and have to maybe stop watching for a moment to go join my family for dinner, my physical body might be at the dinner table, uh, but my mind and my emotions are off somewhere else. And again, it's that disconnect that creates this sense of, of dissatisfaction, of stress, and of distraction in our lives. And so I found it to be very helpful to ask that very simple question, what am I thinking right now? What, what am I thinking and feeling? And what behavior is that causing me to have? And so as we begin to process the events that are going on culturally and publicly, um, from time to time pausing, and especially if you're like me and you have to really resist the urge to, to obsessively check and see what the latest update is and see what all the breaking news alerts say, um, it, it's helpful to be able to just pause and say, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? And how is this causing me to behave? And the more we can do that, the more we realize that we actually have control over what's happening here, uh, what's happening in our minds, what's happening in our physical bodies. We can pause for a moment, we can relax our shoulders, we can relax our jaws, we can unclench everything, and we can relax. And we can recognize that we have control over our emotions, over our thoughts, and over our reactions and responses. But what we don't have control over is everything and everyone else. And that's probably the hardest thing to let go of. Um, in the, the age that we live in with social media and things, sometimes it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that if I can just say the right thing on Facebook, all of these problems will stop. And we all know that it's not true, but we keep trying it anyway. Um, and so by, by acknowledging what's happening within myself and by tethering myself into the present moment, I give myself control over the only thing that I do have control over, which is me and my thoughts and my responses. So that's what I would like to, uh, to pass along today uh, as we move into our meditation time together. Uh, my hope is that each one of you are, are doing well. Um, my hope is that if you're watching this, uh, you've not experienced lots of trauma or lots of stress from the events that have been happening, uh, but that you are finding those helpful and productive ways to deal with it and to, to mindfully move through it. Because the, the more and more we all do that individually, the more our collective mindful conscience grows. And um, I believe that's, that's uh, where we begin to take good steps forward. So um, that's, that's what I would like to share with you today. And so now, uh, with that in mind, uh, let's settle in and have our meditation time together. Um, if you're like me and you're seated in a chair, go ahead and put your feet flat on the floor. And if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and mute your microphone. It does sound like maybe somebody has theirs unmuted and we're getting a little background noise coming in. Uh, so if you'll just make sure your microphone is muted. Find a comfortable place and allow your body to settle in. Be upright and attentive, but not rigid. Uh, make sure your spine's not slouching, but also make sure that you're not uncomfortably straining. And angle your chin downward a bit. You can either close your eyes or keep your gaze just a few feet out in front of you. And let your shoulders fall away from your ears. Unclench your jaw. And let's begin. And in this mindful posture, begin to notice everything that's happening in your mind, in your body. And don't try to do anything fancy. Don't try to avoid. Don't try to repress anything. Just let everything be. 
And let's turn our focus first to our breath. Begin to inhale deeply through your nose. And on your inhales, try not to pull your chest up or strain with your shoulders, but let your upper torso be relaxed and let the air pass all the way down into your belly. Let your belly expand like a balloon on each inhale. Let your breathing be very relaxed and very deep all the way down. Just let your focus rest there on the inhale for a bit. Notice the air as it comes in, as it passes across the openings of your nostrils. Notice how it feels every time your belly expands to receive the air. Don't worry yet about the exhale. Don't worry about what your mind is doing. Don't worry about what your body is doing. Just focus on the sensation of air entering into your body and expanding your belly up like a balloon. And if your mind wanders, that's okay. Just return your attention to your inhale. If it helps, if you find that it's still distracting, every time you inhale, say in your mind, I know I am breathing in. Let's turn our attention now to the out breath. Let your out breath be a little bit longer than your inhale. Really notice yourself emptying the lungs completely of air. And again, as you fill them back up, don't strain, don't use your upper torso, just let your belly expand, but then keep your attention on that out breath. Follow the air all the way to its end. And if your mind begins to wander, that's okay. Just put your focus back on your out breath. Every time you exhale, breathe all the way out until your lungs are completely empty. And keep your shoulders relaxed and your chest relaxed. There should be no straining, no struggling. Be fully present with your out breath. And if it helps, every time you breathe out, you can say to yourself, I know I am breathing out. And 
And if things around you become distracting, if you hear sounds or noises, if thoughts pop into your mind, if you feel something in your body, that's okay. Don't try to repress it. Don't try to ignore it. But just gently return your attention to your out breath, following it all the way to its end. Let's do that a couple more times, following your out breath. I know I am breathing out. Now let your breath return to just a normal rhythm where you're not fully conscious of it, you're not controlling it, but it's regular, it's effortless. Let's turn our attention to our thoughts. As you sit in your mindful posture, as you continue to breathe normally, as you continue to feel the sense of relaxed presence, ask yourself, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? And it might take a moment, but just notice what comes to the surface as you sit with your thoughts. Don't try to control them. Don't think, oh, that's a bad thought or that's a good thought or that's not a helpful thought or a productive thought. Just let the thought be what it is. Notice it. And if it helps, you can say something like, I'm thinking about work, or I'm thinking about a friend. And as you observe the thoughts that come to mind, name what the thought is without judgment, without positive or negative value. Continue to breathe. Notice if the thoughts that are in your mind generate any emotions, positive or negative. And it's fine to be able to say, this thought makes me feel happy, or this thought makes me feel stressed. And in doing so, release yourself from emotional attachment to it and just simply name what it is, name what's happening inside of you and be present with your breath, be present with your thoughts, be present with your reactions, naming them as they arise. If you find yourself becoming untethered and tangled up in the activity of your mind, that's okay. You can just gently return to your breath and name what you were thinking about. As you continue to breathe and as you continue to notice the thoughts and the emotions that come to your mind, 
Let's turn our focus finally to our body. We don't often pay attention to the ways that our thoughts and our emotions manifest in us physically. And so just begin to notice where you might be holding stress. If you feel that your shoulders have risen up since our time began, let them relax again. If you feel your jaw is tight, unclench it. If your forehead is wrinkled or if your eyes are closed strongly, relax those. Let everything in your face be soft. Notice where you might feel a strong pulse, maybe in your chest, your hands or feet. Just notice what your body's doing. Without judgment, without assigning positive or negative value to it, without even trying to fix anything, just let it be and notice it and welcome it. As we begin to wind down our time together, as we've noticed our breath, we've noticed and named our thoughts and emotions, we've noticed what our bodies are doing. Let's take these final few moments to cultivate a sense of compassion, a sense of love for ourselves, a sense of affection for who we are and for how we are. If it helps, let a half smile curl up on the edges of your lips. Sometimes I find it helpful to put a hand over my heart center, over my chest, and just feel the warmth. Allow myself to feel loved. Remind yourself that you are good and that you are also still growing still learning, still becoming. Let a sense of gratitude well up within you for who you are, for exactly how you are, for how your mind works, for how your body functions with all of its positive and negative, with all of its strengths and flaws be grateful. And continue to sit for a moment in this deep sense of compassion for yourself, compassion for those around you, and especially a deep sense of gratitude. And let this present awareness go with you, especially as you enter into times of stress and conflict, especially as you uh, enter into times that are unfolding publicly and culturally in whatever ways those impact you. You can always return to this place of mindful presence, of mindful compassion, and of mindful awareness of what your thoughts and emotions are doing and the effect that they have on your body, on your behavior. 
and together we can all move through this time a bit more mindfully. So when you're ready, you can open your eyes. I hope that that was helpful for everyone and uh, my, my thoughts and my heart are with you all as we navigate this uh, somewhat difficult time in our society. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful to have, to, to know that there are people mindfully navigating these things and, and really doing their best to bring about good in the world. And so uh, don't be discouraged, don't be overwhelmed whenever we, we think that everything is all bad. Um, so uh, that's my hope for all of us today. So everyone have a good week.